That's called Laplace's rule of succession. And let's start with the case that an event keeps occurring. Yeah? Let's say you have a coin and toss it. And every time you get the same result. Event keeps occurring. Yeah? N times. If this event has a probability of P, yeah, then the probability to observe it N times is of course cos P to the N. Yeah? Um, And we can compute, again, using the same approach than we, that we did um, before. We can compute this because we know that the integral over all cases of P, uh, P needs to be 1. Yeah. No, over, over the probability, uh, that, uh, that's wrong. Um, the um, probability distribution for, um, for P or the posterior probability um, so the probability that we have some event probability P given our data again yeah, is P to the N and assuming a constant prior again divided by the integral over this times the prior and this integral is 1 over n plus 1 yeah so what we get here is n plus 1 times p to the power of n. That's our probability distribution. Habe ich das nicht eigentlich auch ausgedruckt? Ja. You can apply it though. Let's apply this to the sunrise problem. Yeah. The sunrise problem. So we saw it rising n times in a row. What's the chance? What's the probability that it will rise tomorrow? Um, so what we're asking is basically the probability that we have n plus 1 sunrises given the fact that we observed n sunrises. Yeah. And that's the probability for n plus 1 divided by the probability of 1. And this is how the probability for a number of sunrises is computed. So as a result, we get this. Of course, applied to a sunrise, this sounds strange. But if you say, OK, you, have, you toss a coin and you get heads. First try. Second try, you get heads. Yeah? When you start, you believe everything is equal, you have a 50% chance maybe so and then you get it 10 times in a row 11 12 13 and at some point you need to adapt your um, estimation of the pro event probability yeah so 
So for example, if we plot this and are looking at, so I have to say this is, uh, If we put in the numbers and compute the probability distribution for the case one out of one trials, that's the result. If we, if we do it for five out of five, it looks like this. 10 out of 10, it looks deeper. And if you say, okay, 100 out of 100 case, it becomes very steep here. And that's exactly what our naive interpretation would be. With every additional positive outcome of the, of the experiment, we would change our estimate of the probability towards further towards one. It seems to be a sure event. Maybe, yeah? Maybe there's no tails on the, on the coin. I don't know. Yeah, but that's how these probability distributions adapt again to the data. Um, um, you can do the same if you, uh, if we say it's not a sure event, so R out of R times, but let's say R successes, successes out of N times. Yeah. Just let me write down the integral briefly. So P R one minus P N minus R dp, so that's the integral over the likelihood, um, again, and that's r factorial n minus r factorial over n plus 1 factorial, so the probability, the posterior probability for a given um, event probability is then n plus 1 factorial r factorial n minus r factorial and then the um, likelihood p to the r 1 minus p n minus r and this is something that you can also plot for various cases of um, r and n and just to give a couple of examples, if we have 0 out of 1, it looks like this. If we have 3 of 5, it peaks at 0 0.6. Hmm. Was haben wir hier? Um, let's say we have 8 of 10, then it peaks here at 8. And if we have 10 out of 50, it looks somewhat like this. You can take a look at the lecture notes there. I plotted the various cases. Um, again, it peaks there at the, pro, at the relative frequency um, and becomes more narrower the higher n becomes. 